So let's wrap this up. The answer to the question, why don't Japanese people share with others? Or why are they cold hearted? Is. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. It's very sad, but last year in 2021, it was presented by the Charities Aid Foundation in the UK. The Japan ranked the lowest in the World Giving Index, and not just close to second from last. I mean, dead last. Why is it that the Japanese, who call themselves the people from the land of harmony, are the most disinterested and cold hearted people in the world? So today, I'll explain more on what this ranking is and how horrible the ranking of Japan is. Then I'll talk about some of my opinions on why Japanese people are the coldest people on this planet. By watching this video, you'll surely be able to deepen your understanding towards the characteristics of Japanese people. And it's especially recommended to those who are willing to study or live in Japan someday. Today's story might change your image of Japanese people completely. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. So learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. So let's go. First of all, let's take a closer look at the data that proves Japan is the country with the most cold-hearted people. The World Giving Index is data published by the Charities Aid Foundation, a charity organization in the UK which has been presented since 2009. They ask people from each country whether they've done the following three things in the past month. 1. Helped a stranger or someone you didn't know who needed help. 2. Donated money to a charity. 3. Volunteered your time to an organization. In 2021, data was released on how much each country helped others during the corona pandemic. A closer look at this data reveals some very disappointing results. Japan is ranked at the bottom of the list, down 10% from the 2018 survey. And what's most shocking of all is that Japan wasn't ranked close to second from last. It was at rock bottom. Portugal, which ranked 113th, had 20% while Japan, which ranked 114th, had only 12%. In other words, only one in every 10 Japanese people are willing to help others. By the way, Indonesia in first place was at 69%, and other countries in the rather lower ranks from 105th to 113th were at 25 to 20%. Of the three items from the survey, the worst of Japan was, have you helped a stranger? which ranked the lowest at 114th. Many Western countries ranked lower than previous years because they had strict social restrictions, such as lockdowns, that prevented them from helping people compared to before. Japan, however, despite the lack of lockdowns and social restrictions that undermined the opportunities to help others, came in last place by a wide margin. Of course, this ranking will not tell you everything about the characteristics of a nation's people. However, I am very disappointed that as a man living in Japan, I don't feel this ranking is different from reality. So why is it that Japanese people are so unwilling to help and share with others? To make long story short, it is because Japan is a country with a very unique collective society. But what does that actually mean? This may sound a little bit difficult, but if you understand the following three things I'm going to explain, you will be able to deeply understand the habits of Japanese. 1. What collectivism is. 2. Why Japan is a collectivist society. 3. How collectivism and Japan's coldness are related. 1. What collectivism is. Collectivism refers to ideas and tendencies that value groups rather than individuals. The opposite is individualism, the idea which denies the authority of the state and society and respects the rights and freedoms of the individuals. You might be able to express it as seniority system versus merit system too. 
I understand that these two terms have many different definitions, but in this video, we'll define them this way. I always use the metaphor that collectivism is people living together on a boat in the ocean, and individualism is people living on a large open land. Another analogy might be individualism is a one-person race, and collectivism is 30 people on 31 legs. I will explain what these metaphors mean in more detail later on in this video. 2. Why Japan is a collectivist society? Then how did Japan become a collectivist society? There are of course multiple factors, but I always explain about the following two things. One, Japan is an island nation with a great amount of natural disasters. Two, the social system during the Edo period. Japan is a mere 0.28% of land on Earth, but it has 7% of all active volcanoes, 10% of all earthquakes, 20% of all earthquakes stronger than magnitude 6.0, average of 26 typhoons passing near or over every year, average of 2,000 landslide disasters every year. These environmental characteristics have forced Japanese people to cooperate with each other in order to survive. No matter how powerful a person you are, you can't win against natural disasters. It also meant that the people always had an eye out to attack and kick out anyone who were uncooperative or could not blend into the group. This is because having one selfish person could lead the whole community to danger in emergency situations. In addition, being an island nation has had a great impact because even if we were unhappy with the environment we were living in, we could not easily flee to another country. So as a natural instinct, Japanese people learned that the best way for survival is to not stand out and to not pursue personal interests, which is exactly what collectivism is all about. Please imagine the metaphor I introduced earlier about the group of people living on a boat in the ocean. Our ship is frequently hit by storms, and when it is, everyone has to work together in order to get through it. No matter how much you hate this dangerous environment, you cannot run, because if you get off the ship, you will die. Even today, several people who didn't follow the rules and caused trouble during emergencies were kicked off the ship. In order to avoid being like them, I should always look at the people around me and live like everyone else so I don't accidentally stand out. This is the very idea of Japanese collectivism. Next, it was the ruling system during the Edo period that changed the Japanese society into an even more collectivist one. The most significant feature of this period is that it was a miraculously peaceful time with no wars for over 250 years. But this was due to the overwhelming dominance of the Tokugawa shogunate. They used the original collectivist traits of the Japanese people to perfect their complete control. Here are some examples of what the Edo shogunate specifically did. 1. Dividing the land into clans and creating family register system so people can not easily leave their hometowns. 2. Dividing the people into social classes and determining where they can live, what they can do, and what they can wear, etc. 3. Restricting trade with and movement to foreign countries. 4. Introducing Neo-Confucianism to educate that protecting faces and always obeying superiors are a virtue. Anyone who broke these rules would be severely punished. And if you were a samurai, you will be ordered to commit seppuku. In other words, they tried to eliminate conflicts and minimize problems by clearly deciding who could live where and what they could do on the ship. Thus, among the Japanese people, the most important thing in life is not to disturb the harmony within the space and to carry on the tradition without making changes. Our ancestors lived and died fulfilling their assigned status and role as they were supposed to. It's hard to believe that such a complete control by a single government was possible, but history speaks for itself. Now, before we move on to the next chapter, there is one thing I need to make clear. It is that Japan is a collectivist society, but this doesn't mean that each individual actually values the group and likes to do the same thing as everyone else. 
If Japan is collectivist because it likes and cares the group, then we should be helping each other more, right? While acting in a collectivist manner, each person is an individualist, putting their own interests first. This is the point where Japan's collectivism is unique. 3. How collectivism and Japan's coldness are related. Finally, this is the most important part of today's video. The biggest difference between collectivism and individualism is whether people act to earn positive points or to avoid negative points. Let me use some examples to explain. An individualistic society is an environment where people have to manage to survive on their own in a large land where they can move around freely. It is important to know how competent and valuable you are to society, which will determine whether or not you will be accepted. In other words, people who are more skilled or can act for the benefit of others are valued. Therefore, people act in order to earn positive points. In collectivism, this is the complete opposite. A collectivist society is a society where people live together on a boat in the ocean, following the rules and being careful not to be spotted and kicked out. In other words, the main focus of our actions is how to avoid being different from others and being rejected from society. In collectivism, being outstandingly better than others or being unnecessarily kind to someone can even have a negative meaning. It's because that person is different. In reality, there are tons of people who criticize those who take part in volunteer activities as trying to unneedly show they are a good person, or those who donate to charity as a publicity stunt. Let's also use the analogy that individualism is a one-person race, and collectivism is a race with 30 people on 31 legs. Because you run in races alone in individualism, the faster and more skilled you are, the better. However, collectivism requires all 30 people to run at the same stride and pace, otherwise they will all fall together. One person who is incredibly fast, tall, or have outstanding abilities is just a nuisance. This is why these kind of people are attacked and kicked out of the group. People who live in an individualistic society might look at the current situation of Japan and ask, why don't you guys do things more rationally? Or how long are you going to follow the same old rules? This is because the Japanese people still believe that it's good to tie each other's legs together and force each other to be the same. Or I should say that's the only way they know how to run a society. So let's wrap this up. The answer to the question why don't Japanese people share with others? Or why are they cold-hearted? Is doing something good for others has a rather negative meaning. It is better to do nothing than to do something badly and stand out. This is the fundamental way of thinking of Japanese people. Regarding the things that I have explained, the main reasons why Japan's ranking in the World Giving Index has dropped especially during the corona pandemic are 1. You will be attacked by others if you test positive with COVID, so people quit interacting with others. 2. People who used to help visitors from abroad are no longer doing so because of the isolation. In Japan, people who have tested positive with COVID or were financially troubled by it were not helped or supported, but rather subjected to violence as they were considered to be a burden to the group, or in this case, the country. Many celebrities have suspended their activities due to COVID-related events, and people living in the countryside put up signs all over town telling people to not come home from the cities. Seeing this situation, people start to avoid getting involved with others as much as possible. Also, I often heard from overseas travelers that Japanese people are very kind and that random people on the streets gave them directions. I think this is because Japanese know that people from overseas don't follow the same rules as in Japan, so it is easier for those who want to be nice to do so. For me too, it takes a lot of courage to help a Japanese person. But if it's a person from abroad, I can help them without thinking twice. 
Since Japan is currently in a long state of isolation due to COVID, I expect that people from overseas are hardly in town, and help has almost been completely lost. So now, before we end this video, I want to make it very clear that I am not suggesting that individualism is justice and collectivism is evil. Every culture in every country is the result of its environment and history, and there aren't any cultures above or below others. Please understand that this video is just an introduction to my own understanding of Japanese society from what I've studied about it. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about my opinions, or if you have any other questions. Then lastly, today's conclusion. Last year, in 2021, it was presented by the Charities Aid Foundation in the UK that Japan ranked the lowest in the World Giving Index. I personally believe this is because Japan is a country with a unique collectivist society. Collectivism refers to ideas and tendencies that value groups rather than individuals. In collectivism, being unnecessarily kind to someone rather has a negative meaning because that person is acting differently. The main reasons why Japan's ranking in the World Giving Index has dropped especially during the pandemic are 1. You will be shamed by others if you test positive with COVID, so people quit interacting with others. 2. People who used to help people from abroad are no longer doing so because of the isolation. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards Japanese society and the characteristics of Japanese people, please hit the like button to help me boost this video to more people. And our goal is to achieve 1 million subscribers by January 2023, so your help would mean a lot. And please check out our sub channel and membership through the link inside the description box. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita.